So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Amen. Are you, are you blessed this Sunday? Amen and amen. If you're blessed today, can we just give God our very best clap offering? <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. So I'm also blessed. It's better to be in God's house than a thousand elsewhere. Amen. Amen. And what's, what's with us today? Ano bang meron for today? Ano bang pinagpalit natin for our service today? What do we have? May nakalimutan po ba tayong panoorin? Ang big, big fight ni Manny Pacquiao versus Bradley. So, pakita natin yung bro. So, ito po yung big fight for today. And I praise God for you've watched God's presence instead of uh, Manny Pacquiao's game. And I believe that we're here. And we're praying for him, and I pray that he's going to win later. So later, you could watch it. I, I think we could still catch up for a fight later on. And who here are the fans of Manny Pacquiao? Are you all fans of Manny Pacquiao? Who, who are you betting on if you're allowed to bet on Bradley or Pacquiao? Of course, diba kayo Pacquiao tayo, and I'm also a big fan of Manny Pacquiao. But... In the life of Manny Pacquiao, do you know the life of Manny Pacquiao? In his old self, you know what? This is his story. This is his life story. That before pala, he was uh, used to going to casinos. He was uh, going there, bro, for, for betting and then so many vices. And he was also a womanizer. He had admitted that to the public. Uh, babaero daw po si Manny Pacquiao. So that's his old self. That's his sinful life. But... As he said in some of his preachings, that when God talked to him, I think it was in a dream, and then everything just turned around, and now his whole family is born again, and he's now preaching the word of God to millions and millions of people. Amen? So Manny Pacquiao, saludo tayo kay Manny Pacquiao, for he's truly a blessing, not only for our country, but also for the Christian faith. And that's what he did. In his old self, he immediately left his old self and followed God's word, and now his family and his life is a blessing to many. And not only there, it's also in God's word that there were people who were changed because of the power of God, because of the power of Jesus Christ. And we're going to see the story of four fishermen that could be found in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 22. And it says here, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw another two brothers named James, the son of Zebedee, and John his brother in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And finally, he called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed Jesus Christ. So could we bow down our heads and let us pray? Hallelujah, Father in heaven, we humbly ask for your presence. Lord God, we don't want to do this by might, nor by power, but only by your spirit. Lord God, the words, Lord God, that, that are going to go out from my mouth are not my words. It's just, these are not human words. These are not fleshy words, Lord God. But these are words that comes from you, Lord God. That's why I have no authority to take any glory, Lord God, but all the glory belongs to you. And right now, Lord, speak to our hearts, Lord God. Speak to our minds. It's you, Lord God, who will bless your people. It is you, Lord God. You have the power to change us, Lord God. And Lord God, today, we claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, amen and amen. Can just give God our very best clap offering. Hallelujah. So according to the story, there were four fishermen. So four fishermen was in the story, and it, it was a batch of two brothers, James and Andrew, uh, Peter and Andrew, and then James and John. So this is how they looked like. They were fishermen. So are there any fishermen here in God's house? May mga mangingisda ba dito? So wala pong mangingisda. So if you don't know the culture of a fisherman, you know what? In the, in the first century fisherman pala, a fisherman is very rude. So do, they don't have the right attitude. They don't speak right. You know, they, they are not kind. They are rude. They, their words are not good words. They 
they are arrogant. So that's their characteristics. And not only that, they are filthy. So when we look at the fishermen before now, they look unpleasant. They look smelly. Could you take uh, time right now to smell your seatmate? Uh, paki amoy nga kung amoy ano ba siya, professional, kung amoy taga Marriott ba siya. Diba? So, but the fishermen daw at that time were filthy. They don't smell good, they don't look good, they don't talk good, and we end up that they are unqualified. And what does it mean when it, it means unqualified? This is what it means. They are not fit, fit or they fail to meet the requirements, specifically in following Jesus Christ. So this is the fishermen. So, so when we continue to see their life, this is what they're doing in their life. They were fishing. So this is how their boat looks like. And they don't use dynamites yet at that time. So they use a basic uh, fishing net to throw it into the sea. And so this is their way of life. They wake up in the morning, they will do fishing. Before they go home, they will do fishing. And this is their source of life. This is where they get their wealth. And I believe today, in their time, fishing, being a fisherman, has already become their comfort zone. That is their comfort zone. They will live with it, they will die with it, and that's their comfort zone. So what does it mean when it's in their comfort zone? Comfort zone means a position in which a person feels secure and comfortable. So could you ask your seatmate right now, are you in your comfort zone? So thanks to Marriott for the comfortable seats that they have provided for us. But truth in our lives, are we in our comfort zone that nothing's happening already, no stress anymore, no problems anymore, just the same old, same old things, just like this fisherman, they've been doing that for all their lives. So there's no more challenge added to it already. So they are in their comfort zone. Then suddenly, Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So suddenly Jesus uh, changed it, everything and challenged them to follow him. So today this is what we're going to talk about. What was the response of the four fishermen in the defining moment that Jesus Christ has for them? In the defining moment that would change their life completely. So are you ready to hear God's word today? Amen. I'm also ready to preach to you God's word. So for the first two batches of brothers, it was it was Peter and Andrew. So the first, first brother, the elder brother is Peter. And who was Peter? Peter was a sinner. So sino ba dito mga sinners? Are you a sinner? Amen. I'm also a sinner. Your seatmate right now is a sinner. Uh, your neighbor is a sinner. All of us here are sinners. So how did we say that Peter was a sinner besides he's only human? But when, it, when we look at Luke 5, chapter, verse 8, it says, when Simon Peter saw Jesus, when Simon Peter saw the marvelous works of Jesus Christ, what happened to him? He fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, I am a sinful man, O Lord. So because of his, because of his sinfulness, because of his guilt in his heart, he said to God, Lord, depart from me, I'm unworthy. I'm unqualified to follow you. I'm unqualified to be in your presence. And that's what, that's what sin makes to our lives. Sin equals to us that we are unqualified. We're unqualified to do the work of God. And in, in our lives today, when we relate it into our lives today, let's see how, how comfortable we are when in sinning. Sometimes because sin has already become our comfort zone. So here's, here's the statistics about the sexual behaviors of people. So this statistics is coming from 18 years old to 35 years old in the population of the U.S. So they, they did the statistics whether they look at the outlook when it's morally wrong, depends on the situation, morally acceptable, or they don't have any stand about it. So for the first, first ano, question, it was asked, is it all right to be cohabiting with no intention to marry? So in other words, is it all right for the youth? Is it all right for the millennials for a live-in relationship? So that's the question. So 25%, it, they said it's wrong. 25% of the population said it's wrong. So 21%, uh, it depends. We may be, need to understand the people. But 
50% of the population said, it's all right. Live in relationship, no problem, it's all right. So the next, it says, having a child outside of marriage. So is it okay for the people, for the youth of today, na premarital sex, is that all right? That you're going to have a baby, but you're not yet married? You're going to have sex, but you have not yet married? So people say that... 25% know it's wrong. You should not do that. I'm making a stand. It's wrong. But 40% of the population says it's all right. Premarital sex, no problem. It's all right. Third, they said, what about casual sex? What about casual sex? Casual sex means friends with benefits. Uh, you don't know each other. Uh, you've just seen them now. You're just their friend. No relationship. You're not your boyfriend, girlfriend. But let's just have sex. That's just what I want. So it's an it's a equal position. 37% said it was wrong, but 37% also says it's acceptable. So nasa gitna pa siya. And later on, if we don't make a stand, for sure, it's going to go higher upon acceptability. And finally, about same-sex sexual activity, people say that 38% it's morally wrong, but... 42% nowadays said, it's all right. So this is how we are. This is us today, 2015. 2016 statistics, millennials, that's me, and that's some of you there. And we say, this is all right. And sometimes sin has become our comfort zone. And that's the same thing that's going on in Peter's life. He was a sinner, and somehow he has been comfortable with his sin. Now let's look at his brother, and his, uh, his brother was Andrew. And Andrew was an amateur. Could you ask your seatmate right now, are you an amateur? So siguro sabi niya, anong ibig sabihin? <laughs> anong ibig sabihin ng amateur? Kung di natin alam yung amateur, amateur means that we're not a professional, we're not equipped, we're not fit, uh, we're a beginner, we're a newbie, amateur. And Andrew was an amateur. How did we say that? In John chapter 1, verse 40, it says, One of the two heard John speak and followed Jesus, and that other one person was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. So Jesus asked him, Jesus turned, seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? Andrew, what do you need from me? Why are you following me? What is it with you that you keep on following me? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say when translated means teacher. Where are you staying? So we could see here that Andrew was an amateur. He has no mentor. He was looking for a teacher. He was trying to gain experience because, because he knows from himself that he's unworthy. He doesn't know anything yet. He's a beginner. And amateur makes us unqualified. Well, amateur in this world, it makes us unqualified to do the big roles in this world. And now we're going to check, san ba tayo dito? Are you a professional or an amateur? Could you ask your person right next to you, are you a professional? So ano sabi niya? Professional ba siya? Somehow we don't know yet. So here are the characteristics of a professional versus an amateur. So right now, let's self-assess ourselves. Sino ba tayo sa dalawang ito? So a professional daw, number one, it says, Learns every aspect of the job. That's a professional. So you're, you're put here in the position, maybe you're in front desk, but you want to learn more of the things of the hotel, so that's a professional. But an amateur is, keeps the learning process. So this is my task. This is what I'm just going to do. I don't care about you anymore. Ito lang ang gagawin ko. So that's an amateur. So sino tayo dyan sa dalawa na yan? Second, a professional looks like a professional. So look at your seatmate right now. Does he or she look like a professional? Amen. Pro praise God. You look like a professional. We're here in church. Yes, mga taga Marriott ay bulukang professional. But an amateur looks sloppy in appearance and speech. So just like the fishermen that we've talked about a while ago, the four fishermen, they were sloppy. They didn't look good. Third, it says, they have a clean workplace. So, tayo ba yun? Sa office, at home, do we have a clean workplace? Amen. So, walang sumasagot. Lagot kayo kay mommy. Kasi yung mga nanay talagang malinis sa bahay. 
Gagalit pag makala tayo, but an amateur has a messy workplace. Fourth, a professional does not allow mistakes to slide by. So kung may mali tayong nagawa, we've done something wrong, what do we do? Sometimes, di ba? We're just like an amateur. We'll let it go. We'll just let it go, but a professional doesn't make allow it to slide by. And finally, a professional jumps into difficult assignments. They want the challenge, they want the problem, they want the difficult task, but an amateur, what do they do? They try to go, go out of difficult work. And that basically explains this whole graph here, that a professional would love the challenge, but an amateur, sometimes this is where we are. Oh man, I don't like the hard stuff. I just want the easy stuff. And sometimes in our lives, most of the time, amateur has become our comfort zone. We just are comfortable and secure being an amateur. But this is, what is, this is the challenge of God to them. They immediately left their nets and followed Jesus Christ. In spite of their stature, Peter was a sinner. Andrew was, was an amateur, but they left their nets and followed Jesus. But here's the thing for us people, us humans, this is what we want. This is what we're thinking. Before I follow Jesus, before I do the hard stuff, what I want to happen is I want to be fixed first. Amen, right? the church, we want to be fixed first before I follow God, before I be part of the ushering, before I lead here in church. I want to be pure of my sin first. I want to be complete first. But this is what Solomon is trying to tell us in Ecclesiastes chapter 1. What does he say? What is crooked cannot be made straight. So whatever is wrong with us in the long run, there will still be something wrong with our lives. And not only that, it says here, and what is lacking cannot be numbered. So right now, we feel that we're still um, amateur. We still lack so many knowledge. But Solomon is telling us, I, you know what? In the long run, still, there's so many things that you need to learn. So walang kwenta daw yan. Dahil sabi niya, in the next verse, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and indeed, all is vanity and grasping for the wind. We may try to keep on pushing the, to fix ourselves up first before following Jesus, but it's all vanity though. And God is commanding us right now. God is challenging us right now. Immediately, today, leave your comfort zone. Today, leave your comfort zone. And next, for, there are another batch of brothers, another batch of two fishermen, and they were James and John. So let's, let's check naman, no, their characteristics. Let's check naman their lives. And James, he was successful. So sino dito mga successful people? So wala, mga humble ang mga taga Marriott. So let's just say that we're just successful. So para makarelate kay James. Why? Because James, alam mo po, the father of James is Zebedee. And his father owned two boats. He owned two fishermen's boats and they had hired men. So the family of James, they were above Peter and Andrew. Though they were all fishermen, but James' family is above them all, and they are successful. Sabi sa research, they are living a comfortable life. And what happened to them when Jesus visited them? In John chapter 5, verse 6 to 7, it says, And when they had done this, when they had obeyed God, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So this is good news for James. This is good news for the family of James. They had the big catch. They were successful. They did it right. They were successful in their business, but successful is not equal to being qualified. Just being successful doesn't mean we're already qualified. So there are three stages in life. And the first stage is we're in that surviving stage. Are you in that surviving stage today? You know, sometimes we just want na mairaos lang yung day natin. So that we could get over it and move on to the next day. Sometimes I hear it in a church, how are you last Sunday? Did you survive last Sunday? Because every Sunday is a difficult Sunday. It's a challenge. But did you survive? Did you pass your exams? Did you graduate? Yes, I survived. I finished it. So we're in that survival stage that 
we're in that average lifestyle. We just want to survive. So we want to get out of it as fast as we can that we may go to that successful stage. So who here are successful? Some of us here have businesses. Some of us here are successful in life. We, are, uh, we have a good career. But is success enough to be qualified? But what we want in life is not only just to survive. We don't want just to be successful, but we want to be significant. That's what we want to happen in our lives. You want to leave a legacy. You want to have an impact in this generation. But James was just successful. And sometimes it has become our comfort zone. Yes, I have the success. I'm rich. I have a car. I'm in this position. But we forget that hindi pa dyan natatapos ang buhay natin. Meron pang itataas yan. And finally, the last brother, the last fisherman, and it was John, and John was young. Sino ba dito mga young? Yung mga young ba dito, or mga young at heart lang? Once young? Yung mga nandyan pa tayo, basta lahat tayo young. Basta mas pasok yung word na yan. So, how did we say that John was young? It says in, his, in the word of God, and John his brother in the boat with Zebedee, their father, was mending their nets. So just John was still with his, with his father. And according to research that the people of the Israelites at the first century, they follow a rabbi, they follow a mentor at the youngest age of 12. So for all those fishermen besides Peter, they were all young. They were below 20 years old. And I believe that John was the youngest. Why? He was still with his father. And he was still mending the nets. He was doing the simplest tasks. And you know what? Young, in this world, it's not qualified. When we go into the industry, young, that's not qualified. Following Jesus, being young, it's not qualified. And we say that be, our age has now become our comfort zone. We say, no, I, I couldn't do that. Why? I'm still young. Or I could not do that. Why? Because I'm old. I'm too old. Give it to the people, other people, and age has become our comfort zone. Now, Jesus said to, to, to James and John, it says here, Jesus called them and said, Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. So in our lives today, as people, we say, You know what? I don't want to leave my success. I don't want to leave my family. Why? That's not acceptable in our minds. You're getting rich. We're, getting ha we're having a good business. Right now, you're going to follow Jesus. No, that's, 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 uh, that's foolish. That's what, uh, uh, last time, last week, I was sitting at the lobby and then just a person approached me there. And then sabi niya sa akin, what's your work? Sabi ko, I'm, 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 doing the, I'm leading the church here at Marriott Manila. And then he, he kept on, nagkakwento siya ng life niya. He's from the States daw, pensionado na siya. And what he said to, what he told me, he said, you know what, that's foolish. What you're doing there in church, there's no money there. You know what, go out of there and work abroad, be with me in America, and we're gonna have a good salary there. But, and that's, that's how the people think. Success, don't leave that success. Don't leave your money. Don't leave your family. But what does, the, what does Solomon say in Ecclesiastes, the richest man in the world? It says in, verse, in chapter 1, it says, What profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? Ano bang kwenta nung ginagawa natin? Of all our labor, what profit does it bring to each one of us? Our business is growing. Our family is growing. What, what profit does it bring to us? And it says here, I made my works great. He's done everything he's got. He's given his all in what he's doing. And it says, I built myself houses and I planted myself vineyards. He had everything. He had a big mansion. If there are cars already at that time, maybe he had, he had all kinds of cars at that time. But what does he say in the next verse? Then I looked on all the works that my hands had done and on the labor in which I toiled, and indeed all was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no profit under the sun. So everything that he's done, everything that he has accomplished, all his greatness, now he says, man, it's all meaningless. 
It's all done under vanity. Walang kwenta pala. So, he reached the top of his career. That's what we want. That's where we want to go. But here's a, a wise man telling us, you know what, when you reach there, it's meaningless. It's vanity. And in, for the family matter, it says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it says, To everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. There's a time for everything. What does he specifically tell us today? There's also a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. So the same thing goes with our lives, with our families. There's a time that we are able to embrace them right now, but later on, there will be a time that we need to leave because God is telling us something to Just like in my life, how I miss my family today. Why? Because they are all in Cavite. And now I'm always here in Manila from Wednesday to Sunday. I'm in here in Manila. I get to see them only on maybe Sundays and Mondays. So right now, I really miss them. Right? We don't see each other anymore. We don't see each other like before the 24-7, I get to be with them. And there's always a time to embrace and a time not to embrace, to refrain from embracing. And this is the challenge of God today. Immediately leave your comfort zone. That's what God is telling us today. And you know what? This word of God, this is very hard to chew. Amen? It is very hard to follow. It's very hard to do because hey, I'm a sinner. How, I will, how will I follow you, Lord? Lord, I'm an amateur. Lang. I don't know anything. Lord, I'm successful. Lord, uh, it's hard to give away my business, Lord. And Lord, I, I'm just young, Lord. So right now, I, I, I know I could relate to you that it's hard to do this, to immediately leave everything behind and follow God. But there's also another person in that story that we failed to see, and his name is Jesus. And Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee. He was in that place also. He was with the fishermen. He grew up there as well. He knows what's happening in the land. And now we've, we've known the four fishermen. We've known their lives, but sino naman to si Jesus? So in John chapter 1, verse 29, it says, the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the, sa- the sin of the world. So this is who Jesus Christ is. He is the Lamb of God. Jesus is the Lamb of God. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He has everything in heaven and in earth. He's the greatest. He is just the man, right? He's perfect. That's who Jesus is. But He is also the Lamb of God. And what does it mean? Jesus Christ immediately left heaven just to save you and me. He left His comfort zone being the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings up there. He had a good place, no problems, no worries, no sadness. He had all in heaven. But what did He do? Immediately, when we needed him, immediately he came down here on earth and saved each one of us today. So what does, he, what does he say to the disciples? In Luke chapter 5, verse 4 to 6, it says, When he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Go out there. Go out to the world unknown. Go out there where you're full of doubts. Go out there, out of your comfort zone and do what you need to do. Launch your nets that you may have a catch, that something may happen in our life. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and catch nothing. Lord, we've done our very best, Lord. We've tried it all, but we've failed. Lord, nothing's happening. Lord, I'm still a sinner. I'm still an amateur. Lord, I'm not significant. Nevertheless, Peter said, at your word, I will let down the net. So they did it. They went out of their comfort zone. They followed Jesus. And what happened to them? And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So a change happened in their lives. Something different happened. And that's what God wants to happen in your life today. 
because Jesus can change your life today. That's what God, that's what Jesus could do to your life today. He could change it all at very instant, immediately. He could change each and every one of us. Just like what happened to these unqualified men, Peter was a sinner. Andrew was an amateur. James was just successful. And John was young. All of them are unqualified. This is who they are. They are unqualified. But what did they do? They just followed Jesus. They left their comfort zone. And what happened to them? They become part of, the, of Jesus' 12 disciples. And right now, people are looking up to these disciples. People are looking up to these four men. And they have changed the whole world. Amazing, right? Amazing when Jesus moves in your life and in my life. And this is what Jesus was trying to say to all of us right now. Just launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Just get out of your comfort zone now. And Jesus understands each and every one of us in Luke 5, chapter, verse 10, it says, And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. He knows you're afraid. He knows we're afraid. He knows what's going through in our lives because we're unsure of what will happen outside of our comfort zone. But Jesus says, do not be afraid for from now on, you will catch men. There's going to be a significant change that's going to happen in our lives from this day forward. So what did they do? In verse 11, it says, So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all. They left everything. They left their comfort zone. What did they do? They all followed Jesus. And their lives were completely changed and mightily used by our God. So this is the only challenge of God for us today, is for us to immediately leave our comfort zone. Right now, this very instant, this very moment, God is challenging us. Jesus is calling us to immediately leave our comfort zone. Why? What is it with immediate? Why today? Because you don't want to miss this life-changing experience of your life. This is a defining moment for you and for me. This is a defining moment for the church. And we don't want to miss this moment for Jesus Christ can save your life today. So if that's you saying, Lord, I want to follow you, but I'm a sinner. Lord, I want to be part of the church, but I'm not yet good, Lord. Lord, I have a business, God. I don't know how to balance things. Lord, I, I work here at Marriott, Lord, but I want to serve you, Lord. I'm, I'm just successful, Lord. And some of us are saying here, Lord, I'm young. Give it to the big guys. Give it to the old guys. Some of that's what we're seeing right now. But God is saying, just follow me. Just immediately. Don't think. Immediately just leave it and look how I will change your life today. So if that's you, if that's your prayer today, I invite you to come to the altar as the praise and worship sings this song. If you want your life to be changed today with the power of Jesus Christ, come in front and we will pray for you. Hallelujah. to come to 
in Jesus for a life changing experience. He is here in this place. I give myself away.
taking us. But Lord God, we're here, Lord God, to immediately leave our comfort zone and follow you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For those who came here in front, could you just raise your hands right now all to God. Both hands held up high as an act of saying, Lord, I surrender. I come to you right now, Lord. Sabayin niyo po ako sa panalangin na ito. Lord Jesus Christ, forgive me for my sinfulness, for all those compromises, and it has become our, my comfort zone. Forgive me, Lord, for my iniquities, for my pride, Lord, for the greediness. Sometimes it has become my comfort zone. But today, Lord, you know I'm afraid. You know I'm unqualified. But you, Lord Jesus Christ, makes me qualified because of the love that you have for me. And today, I take the challenge to immediately, right this very moment, Right this very day, I immediately leave my comfort zone and I will follow you, Jesus, all the days of my life. And I claim that my life is changed forever. I just give God a very blessed clap offering. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet for... For those who are your first time here, you don't know what we're doing, we don't know what's happening with you right now, but you're saying, Lord, Lord, I want to accept you, Lord Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. You're saying, Lord, I've been in a bad life before, in my old self before, Lord, but today, Lord, I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. So if that's you, if you're saying you want to be born again today, and you want to accept Jesus in your life, I invite you to raise your hands right now. If you're there, if you're there, just raise your hands right now. So everybody close your eyes. Don't look at the, your seatmate. But right now, if you're saying, Lord, I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior, raise your hands right now. Yes, there is one here. There's one other one there. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. There are people here who wants to be saved. And if that's you, could you just rise up right now? Jesus is the only one who's seeing you right now. If you're that person raising your hand right now, I could see you. Jesus Christ could see you. Could you could just stand up at this moment and we will pray. Thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's another person, another man there. Yes, just stand up. Just stand up. This is a challenge of Jesus Christ in your life today. And as you've stood up right now, everybody's eyes closed, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus Christ, I come before you today and I say sorry for all my sinfulness. I confess, Lord, that I could not do life on my own strength. I need you, Lord, Jesus Christ. And from this day forward, I receive you as my Lord 
and Savior, and I will follow you till the end of my life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just give God a very best clap offering. Millions of angels are rejoicing in heaven for just one soul receiving Jesus Christ. It's more than enough. Hallelujah. Could we all stand up and let's raise up our tithes and offering to our God. This is a victorious Sunday. People's life are changed. Hallelujah. And we're blessed to witness it. And let's raise up our tithes and offering. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for this, the gift of wealth, Lord. Lord God, but being just successful, Lord, does not make us qualified. Lord God, if you're not with us, Lord God, our businesses will surely fail. All these riches, Lord God, that we have right now shall surely fail. Lord God, as, and as we raise up our tithes and offering to you, God, this is an act of worship. We honor you. And as we raise it high, Lord, we say, Lord, life is more than my business. Life is more than my success. But Lord God, today, what is really has value is following you. And from this day forward, money has no power over my life. Money has no power over my family. And bless your people today. And Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for this wonderful Sunday. It's a joyous Sunday. It's a blessed Sunday for you are in our midst. And our God, we claim that victory for you have changed our lives today. And ikaw lang, Panginoon, ang may taas sa aming buhay. We claim the victory. We give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Let's get it on.
God, the same now, the same now, the same. 